Let's talk about the Yelp soul. Let's talk about the Yelp soul. So, Maggie. Maggie, 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 Maggie. Everybody was warning you about Constantine. Everybody told you he is no good. All you can say is, that bastard, he was using me. Um, everybody warned you. Marlena, John, Steve, your daughter, Xander, Alex, Teresa, your whole family and I, um, your whole family and in family relationships and relatives warned you about this man. You thought it was going to be another Victor story all over again. Well, oh, everybody had a bad rip about Victor. You know, I didn't listen to nothing of what they said about Victor. I fell in love with Victor. I changed Victor. Yeah, Victor and Constantine are two different peoples. And bestly with the whole world, bestly telling you this man ain't no good. This man lying to you. This man manipulating you. This man and did this. This man went and got something off of Fifth Avenue screen and pretended like he paid for it and he got it in the bargain bin for less the prize. Everybody was warning you and telling you, be careful around, be careful around this man, Maggie. Watch out. He is dangerous. I don't think he's here for the right intentions. Maggie, be careful. Pace yourself around this man. I mean, what else did you need? A slap across the face and uh, shake it, shake you and stir you up a little bit to tell you that this man was not here for good intentions? Now, I ain't gonna give you too much, Maggie, but I'm gonna give you enough. With all those warning signs for friends, family, and relatives, you still didn't learn anything? So you thought there was going to be a whole Victor love story all over again. And you thought that Constantine was a once a Victor. Everybody was against him. Let me give this man a shot. And maybe he could turn into the new Victor in my life. Well, unfortunately for you, baby, Victor might have done a whole lot of bad things, nasty things, evil things in his past. But at least Victor pretend like he's sorry. Constantine, not so, not so much. I'm trying to understand and realize why you're so surprised and shocked that this man was using you for your money. You didn't see the vultures and the in the rain and in, in the wings come flying into the in, into the mansion. Victor died. He pretended to be an old friend of Victor. Then come to find out Victor and Constantine didn't get along like that. We should have gave you another red flag and told you, yeah, let me watch you. And plus, that's, your fr that's his friend. I ain't going to have nothing to do with him, especially not sexual or relationship-wise. Like, you didn't see the vulture in the wings coming and trying to look for prey that he can take you. You didn't see this coming. Best friend out of nowhere. John and Victor, John and Steve Bessler told you him and Victor didn't get along like that. You didn't see this coming that he was coming after your money. Then the outburst with what you said you was going to do with the, with the money that Victor left you that you was going to give all of it, well, half a big chunk of it, a big chunk of it to, um, a big chunk of it to charity and then you're going to give the rest to the family. That outburst should have been enough to told you, yeah, he ain't here for the right reason. Let me get this man on from around me. Let me go ahead and get this man from around me. Let me find a way to get myself together and hurry up and, you know, end this right here. Because I can tell right here, right now, you not here for the right intentions. You worrying about the wrong things right here. What I do with this money is my business. I expect Sarah and Zelda to maybe say something, but you only know you a couple of months and you up here having an opinion on what I do with this money, even though I'm already rich and I ain't hurting for nothing. Yeah, that should have been a red flag for you right there and say, yeah, mm-hmm. It's a shame that John, Marlena, and Steve had to sit you down and tell you this man willing to kill your behind just to get that money. 
and you sit up there crying and in shock. Megan, you cannot be that naive in life. You are all rich white woman and you cannot be that naive. You cannot be that naive hanging around Victor and these rich folks all this time to let this man almost swindle you like that like he almost swindled you. You cannot be that naive, Maggie. And love foolish, maybe. But crazy, this man willing to kill you and you sitting up here calling him a bastard. You didn't see any of this coming. We smelled that Constantine from a mile away. Why didn't you smell him? Marrying him to kick him in the country? Maggie, are you crazy? Just like everybody else was willing for him to go by, see you later. You should have been right on that same ball. Bye, Constantine. See you later. When you get your visa back together, come on back to Salem. We'll see you back again. You should have did all day. You should have been on the same boat with everybody else. Trying to hurry up and get him on out. Hell, Stephen John was even helping you hurry up and get him out of town. They were making sure his visa didn't get, um, he didn't get more time on his visa. And all you can think of, uh, let me marry him and kick him in the country. He's a good friend of Victor, so I want to kick him in the country. And also, I'm catching a little feelings. Go ahead. Maggie, you get what you deserve at this point. I, I just can't with you at this point. Like, you surprised, you shocked, and you stood up there crying, and you still didn't see none of this coming. I am ashamed of you, but I'm, I'm embarrassed for you, Maggie. Even though that man gave you several warning signs, you still didn't ignore all of them. Cause I guess some kisses made you, made you a little bothered. So you was up there trying to figure out, um, if I ever find love, I'm guessing it's gonna be Constantine, the first man you meet you gonna fall in love with. Okay, Maggie, whatever. I'm going to get off your neck now. But whatever. Maggie, you just a little too naive for my liking. Telling you a tough cookie. You ain't too tough. That man almost willing to do anything and everything to get your money. And you almost let it happen. Since we're talking about one vulture, we might as well talk about the other one over him. Even though she getting played with, manipulated, trying to make her jealous out of her mind. Teresa is another one. You know, I can't give her too much because she ain't got started yet like Constantine. But once Alice mentioned that money, and once Alice cleared that door and left, oh, you right, we gonna have fun. We gonna have a whole lot of, her, her, her ears started ringing, them eyes started having slot machines in, in them, and all she saw was bank, 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 bank. Alice, you better watch out. We didn't see now looking now hungry in her eyes before with Brady. You better watch out. She finna rob you dry. That was supposed to be Xander money, but unfortunately for Xander, he ain't gonna get it. Y'all switch it up, you and Constantine, for um Alice for Alice to get the money, not Xander. So Xander, watch out. At this point, stay with Chris, and at least Chris won't try to rob you from your money, rob you from money. At least you got a cougar. So, I mean, while you trying to make Teresa jealous, I would tell you to stay over there with. Nah, Kristen gonna drive your behind up the wall. I don't know what I'm saying there. I was gonna say your best bet is to stay over there with the cougar Kristen, but yeah, we didn't see what she done done to Brady. And if you think about it, the chain gets sicker and sicker. John, Eric, Brady, not Alex. The chain just gets sicker and sicker. What is up with Kristen with these Bradys and these Blacks? She is going down the whole family tree at this point. And all I can do is sit back and then shake my head wondering, was the sense really that good upside down on your head or sudden crystal for you to want to go down the whole family tree just to make, just to make Brady that jealous? 
Because I'm sorry, after I had the dad, why would I want the son and the stepson for? Why? Why would I want to go there? Why? That's nasty. You done had the dad. You done raped Eric. You dating Brady. Well, you had sex with Brady. Had a child with Brady. Now you down here then left the Brady tree alone. Well, the black tree alone. Now you going down the Brady tree. Which is also a part of his bloodline. Kristen, you too old. That's all I'm going to say right there. You too old to be doing what you doing. That's all I'm going to say. And John, I'm glad you finally came to work today. I'm glad that you are working today. And that you are finally fighting back after all this time. Thank you, John, for finally fighting back and coming to work. And not sleeping on the job all day. Well, for a, for a whole week. Congratulations, you finally came to work. You finally outwitted and outsmarted Constantine. Enough to tell Mega that this fool over here trying to rob her. And she don't even want to see it coming. And also that you basically got brainwashed by that card. Somehow you psyched yourself out of it with the help of Marlene and the tell Maggie what's going on so thank you for finally showing up to work and thank you for not letting Constantine ruin you and Steve relationship that y'all done had over four or five years however long y'all done been friends thank you for finally waking up and showing up to work <clears throat> now as for this plan I don't think it's gonna work to be quite honest with you I mean, and Maggie was suckle enough to make that man fall in love with her that fast and that easy, not knowing that I'm here for your money to somebody else had to spill it out to her. I don't think she's smart enough to get herself out of danger, even with Steve and John up there listening to her, or she can alert them at 24 hours, 7 days of the week. I, I don't think she's going to be smart enough. Constantine going to do something, trust and believe. I don't think she's smart enough to contact John and Steve in time to save her life if he take it down. I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. I just don't. I just say I don't think she. I don't think she's smart enough. And she didn't see this man coming after all this time and what this going on. I ain't got no hope in the Maggie. I'm glad she finally woke up to him, but I ain't got no faith in her at all. Ava, Ava, Harris, and Stephen, they found the book. They tried to decode the book. Um, they sent it over to the um, Slow Santa PD. Slow, Slow Santa PD accepted what Harris told them, that they found it looking in the place or whatever he's told them. They believe it. They trying to decode the book. Ava waiting on... Clyde word for she can you know do what she got to do to try to stop him and catch him at the same time y'all ain't gonna catch Clyde but nice try Xander goes over to confront Xander goes over to confront Stephen about the whole setting him up for um for that whole shooting of Harris Stephen says, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you're talking about. And basically, I was upon the, um, Clyde, so what, ha ha. I'm not admitting to anything, but I know what happened, but I'm not admitting to it. And basically, if you want to box somebody, but go ahead and box Clyde, because I had no involvement in it. And basically, if I did have any involvement in it, I was basically a pawn doing his work, and I was a, you know, a sucker doing Clyde work. No one I shouldn't have been doing his work, but I was naive enough to do his work to set you up. So I'm not admitting to anything, but blame Clyde or keep looking for your the one that sought you up for that murder. Well, for that shooting, cause it wasn't me. But if you wanna keep looking, keep searching. Basically, what Stephen basically told him. He basically told him a whole bunch of nothing. And Xander basically said, Well, I guess I got to keep on trying then. Um, EJ 
there's no use of you doing this DNA test. You already know what this DNA test is going to say. You already knew how 100% certain Nicole thought that baby was hers in the first place. You already know Nicole about drove herself insane trying to make y'all believe that that baby was hers. Is a DNA test really necessary, EJ, when you already know the truth and it's standing right there in front of you? What would Leo and Sloane Baloney gain by lying to you? Asking a man scientist to work a DNA test with you, and you should already know the answer, is wasting time, EJ. But waste time, I guess. I guess we never going to get the explosion from EJ. Going to be mad at Nicole, Eric, and all of them for what's happening. How he got thrown in the sun. He shouldn't have been thrown in. And how Nicole got pushed it well, forced in the sun. And that she didn't know what was going on with her lying. She was being open and honest this time. And unfortunately for her... Her past would have come back to bite her and her behind because we know we know Nicole for lying through her teeth. So the one time she don't lie and exaggerate and do all that extra stuff she normally do and hold on to the truth for dear lie, this one time when she innocent is it about is about to come back and bite her in the behind. So. I'm just waiting for the boom. Can we please hurry up with the boom already? That's all I'm waiting on. And Eric, you wasted your time with the giving our woman a mother's a Mother's Day gift. Really, you wasted your time giving our woman a Mother's Day gift. That is not no mother, and she is not raising our baby. You raising our baby. She is a bored housewife. That's all she is. A bored housewife that barely spend less time with that baby. You spend more time with that baby than she ever do. I bet you you put y'all hours together, you're with 10, 20 it's hers any day of the week. Now, why are you calling her a mother, Eric? That's not nice lying to that woman like that, knowing she ain't no mother, and knowing that you do all the work and she do none of it. Eric, cut it out. Um, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. Steph, Steph, get out. And run while you still can. Just run. Steph, just run. Run, run as fast as you can, baby. How y'all went from having a conversation? You said you had to go. He see a little hot little number come walking in from the, I guess, the side door or whatever that was or from the bathroom. His little womanizing self, get up. Go over there. Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm just here chilling. I, you know, I got, I'm drinking too. The, the day off, I'm just having fun. So what's your name? He over here flirting with the next one, but he won't you. He finally let Jayla free from her divorce from him. So basically, he's a womanizer. I knew he was sudden creepy. Womanizer would have never guessed it. But okay, Stephanie, run while you can, baby. Run, run, run. Because after that, I said, ooh. Okay, now she ain't never with her. She, I hope somebody caught that and tell Stephanie that we saw him over here flirting with somebody else. Well, as soon as you left out the door, he was over here. I hope somebody tell Stephanie before she get her, set her hopes up with that again. Cause after he didn't ghost me and did all that, the echoing all weird and strange, I wouldn't talk to that anyway. But somehow Stephanie have a soft spot for men, I guess. You should have gave that man another chance, and now you finna find out he's a womanizer, and probably everything else under that womanizer. Mm. Stephanie, be careful. Just be careful. I thought I saw that. I said Stephanie. Mm. Now we know why Jada wanted out so bad. And if that's the case, I don't blame Jada. He might not remember his past, but Jada do. It's a reason why Jada wanted from away from that man. Ain't nobody gonna wanna be a you you know you know divorces take time. Some of them do most of the time they take time. For Jada for wanting to get out of that divorce to, 
harassing that man, running behind that man, chasing that man. Oh, Jada got some some tea, some tea on that man, and Jada don't want no parts of that man. And after that, I don't blame her. But anyway, so y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Have a good weekend. Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And I'll catch y'all later. Bye.